Welcome back to Fish Hunt Northwest. We're here in the Bait Lab. Bait Lab, always presented by Sport Co. and, of course, Max Lure. Tonight, it's all about the trout, folks, and getting these kids ready for the opener a little more than a week from now on the 23rd. And tonight, we're going to break it down and talk all about the bait. Next week, we're going to get into more troll fisheries and lures, hardware plugs, those types of things. But tonight, it's all about the bait. And uh, with Potskies, boy, we have a line of bait and options now. Some natural baits, some artificials, some synthetics. Really some great options here between Potsky's Bait Company and, of course, Atlas Mike's. We're going to talk about a variety of different eggs. Here on the table, I have some of the new Fire Eggs, which is a rubber synthetic egg. It comes in a packet uh, just like this. They come in a chain. Very easy to break these off and uh, put singles or doubles onto your hook. The cool thing about these is they uh, are definitely buoyant, okay? Also have the Fire Worms, also come in a packet. These little guys here, multi multiple colors. All types of colors, really good UV. Little Fire Worms, I'm gonna show you some things we can do with there. We have natural balls of fire eggs in so many colors and combinations. These are green garlic, we got shrimp, we got the classic balls, uh, balls of fire in red. We have the Mike's UV. This is an infused actual natural salmon egg that increases in size and volume in the cooking process. This is a natural egg, uh, and it's a little tougher than your standard egg, but it increases in size in the way they cook it and put this through the process. That puts it at about a eight to 10 millimeter size in some cases. So for one single egg on your hook, that thing uh, does pretty well. Of course, we got the Mike's marshmallows, and we got these new synthetics. One thing I uh, one thing I realize is I can take these these new rubber or uh, uh, fake eggs here with these worms, and just simply putting that on a single hook, that basically replicates almost a uh, egg sucking leech. Uh, now, one thing to consider on these is that this particular these types of baits here are buoyant, and I want to talk a little bit about the difference between knowing what you're actually fishing in regards to buoyant baits, neutral buoyant, or baits that sink. So typically, most of our natural eggs, uh, any of the balls of fire, the classic balls of fire, and the new synthetic, these rubber synthetic eggs here, uh, the fire balls, and the natural eggs, those definitely sink. The Mike's UV, uh, these enlarged uh, natural eggs, they also sink. Okay, if you ever have any question on whether you are gonna fish floating bait or sinking bait, and want to understand which way they're going to go so you can rig properly, um, just simply throw them in a, take a couple out, throw them in a little glass of water. Simple as that. They sink, you know you got a sinking bait, and uh, you're going to rig appropriately. Fire bait, on the other hand, it's a dough bait, it's a floating bait, okay? All too often I see folks taking fire bait, putting it on a hook underneath a float. They have a buoyant presentation, and they have a buoyant bait and they can't figure out why they're not catching any fish. Uh, if the bait is enough to actually bring the hook all the way to surface, you're gonna have your bobber sitting here, a three foot leader with a buoyant bait floating on the surface. So, and it does happen, okay? So you need to understand what it is you're using uh, and, and rig accordingly. So we got all these options and different ways of presenting. Now, for kids, whether you're on the bank or in a boat, you know, a bobber rig, will get it done all day long, especially with these planter trout. They are typically staying or remaining close to surface because they haven't residualized in the body of water they've been planted into. They've been swimming around in a shallow concrete uh, you know, box for how long? And so you take them out, put them in a big body of water. The water temperature is still typically pretty cold here in the spring. Those fish are gonna stay up and elevated 10 to 15 feet as they cruise around the lake and try to become familiar with their new surroundings. So simple bobber rig, uh, you know, just a classic standard trout rod. I like eight foot. A lot of trout rods are seven and a half. You know, parents, if you're casting for your kids, take full advantage, especially if you're bank fishing. A longer rod is really nice to really get it out there away from the shoreline, get out in a little deeper water where the fish are hopefully gonna be holding. Eight foot rod, two to six pound rating, gets it done all day long. Monofilament on here. I put a, I put a rubber bobber stop up there, a bead on top of my float. This is a quarter ounce float. Pretty simple, we're just downsizing, you know, classic steelhead rig for float fishing. Inline float that slides so I can adjust my depth, little egg sinker below it, give me some ability when casting, that's a quarter ounce egg sinker. Protection bead above the barrel swivel. And then I'm gonna run a couple foot leader and uh, that's basically it. Cast it out there, depending on how far up I set my bobber stop is how deep my presentation's gonna go and be suspended under the float. Those fish will come up and grab it. Now we're gonna use a single hook 
size eight, 10, 12. You can go with a size six. I typically do if I'm fishing lakes with holdover fish, larger uh, planted uh, triploids, or just I know I have bigger fish around in general, especially on the east side of the state, okay? Single hook, you can, you can uh, decide what you wanna do. You can put on a single, you know, we can put on a single uh, uh, max infused egg there. Um, again, this bait is gonna sink. No, you don't need to hide the hook. They're rainbow trout, planter trout out of the hatchery. They're gonna eat, okay? They're looking for anything. A lot of these have great scent to them, good color, vibrant color in UV. So uh, a, single, a single egg on there will get it done all day. The other thing I can do, is uh, take the smaller eggs, some of these, uh, some of these actual natural eggs and the smaller size, nothing wrong with putting a couple on there, simply because when the trout hit that, if they knock one of them off, you still got another bait that you're fishing. Oftentimes, putting two of the small ones on there is gonna get it done. Now remember, these are for baits that I know are gonna sink, and that's gonna be most of your eggs that are of the natural uh, uh, creation, right? We're not taking these uh, rubber eggs or these new, these new uh, uh, imitation eggs and putting them under a float because, well, they're going to float and that's just going to lead to, uh, you know, minimal to no success. All right. So let me pin this on here. Move that over. Let's talk about fishing floating baits suspending off the bottom. Now the classic rig for that is really quite simple. And there's some other things you need to take into consideration on how these baits are designed and how they're designed to be used, okay? So this here is a uh, classic um, egg sinker, and I simply put a protection bead more so for my guide, and then I have an inline egg sinker and another bead. I just like to protect my guide from the lead, and I like to protect my swivel and knot from the lead. So I put a stopper bead on there, barrel swivel, and about a three-foot leader. Now, this is designed to throw out there, let the weight sink to bottom. And if I'm using the uh, right kind of bait, a floating bait, a dough bait, uh, or marshmallows, uh, you can put marshmallows on a hook with a couple eggs, and the marshmallows are going to float your presentation off the bottom. That's a great old standby. It's worked for years, okay? Um, the other thing is with these new improved floating baits, these uh, dough baits with uh, the Potskis, it's pretty simple. Now, uh, you take a little piece out of here, and you don't just put a big glob on your hook, right? We're going to roll that into a small ball. Now, the other thing is you want to look for the hooks that have a spring wrapped around the shank of the hook there. The reason for that is it holds your bait on a whole lot better than just a simple treble hook. Now, simple treble hook will get it done all day long, but these uh, little coiled springs on these hooks do a great job in holding your bait. Now, I'm going to take that small size 10 hook, I'm going to just push it into that ball, form it around here, and that's it. I'm going to throw that out on the bottom. I definitely have enough bait on there to float that small hook up, and that's really what you want to do, okay? You can't have a, such a small amount of bait on there that's not going to elevate that hook off the bottom. How do you figure out how deep the fish are? Well, if I have two or three rods, I'm going to rig this with that sliding sinker so that it allows the bait to float up and pull some line through that sinker that's on the bottom. Typically though, if I have a leader that's three foot, four foot, five foot, I'm gonna throw them out there, I'm gonna see which one's getting bit. If they're, all, if they're getting bit at five foot, I'm gonna change my leaders to all five foot. I know the fish are basically suspended. Typically above the weed line, five feet off the bottom, bait's floating up there. And you know what? They'll chew on this for a bit. If you're finding you're missing fish, put a smaller amount of bait on there. Expose a barb if you have to. <clears throat> Excuse me, push that out till you get that barb exposed. And then you're able to get, uh, get those fish to take this in and, um, you know, get the hook set. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's a, that's a classic rig off the bottom. Works very well. Um, there's another option that I've gone to that, uh, <coughs> that seems to work pretty well. Okay. It is a sliding rig, um, and it's a, it's a single hook. All right. So I'm not using the treble hook to keep the bait on. I'm gonna use a single hook and I'll show you why. The other thing is, I actually rigged this with a, uh, a dual swivel. It's a barrel swivel with your lock on there. In between two beads like I did the weight. And uh, the reason I do that is because this swivel on here allows me to change out the weight. I can clip on a small quarter ounce cannonball onto there, okay? <clears throat> 
I can, I can clip that, that cannonball on there. If I don't need that much weight, I can go down to, say, a little teardrop, eight ounce on, eight ounce on here, okay? Um, if I really want to get it out away from shore, and, you know, the weight on the bottom is not an issue. If I'm not in an area that's real snaggy, I'll put a half ounce on here and give that thing a toss and get it way out there away from the shoreline. I'm going to run that four or five, six foot leader sometimes. Here's the unique thing about a single hook. And something you can do, uh, moms and dads, if you're like going through a lot of bait or your kids are constantly casting it off and it continues just to fly off the hook or whatever the issue is, you can take some of the Popsky fire bait here and simply uh, roll it into a ball and then put it into some of our Mike's uh, net mesh for making small spawn sacks, okay? So here I did this with the, with the green. I had, some, uh, I had the green or the chartreuse spawn bag. And I've made those, uh, those floating baits in the spawn bags and tied them off. Now, the other unique thing about this is you can make these baits a lot smaller than you typically do when you put it on a treble hook. So um, it's real simple to do. I'm going to basically take a little bit of bait out of here, okay? I'm gonna roll it in a ball, just like that. Now I could put that on a treble hook, but using a single hook, that's not gonna stay on real well. You don't wanna typically use dough bait on a single hook, okay? It's designed to go on treble hooks, but I can use a single hook by putting it in the spawn bag. And these pre-cut ones are real nice because all I gotta do is lay it in there, twist it a few times, okay? Twist it into a ball right there, grab my magic thread and start wrapping, okay? So now I'm making a little, little bait ball here and just a handful of wraps on that. And there's no knots or nothing, you just break it off, okay? Trim off the excess. Now, I basically have this little bait ball. Now, if I am fishing a single hook, the way this works so well and why it stays on is because I just simply put the hook right through the mesh of that little spawn bag and that bait right there will fish cast after cast after cast. I mean, the fish can hit it and they're gonna get hooked on that exposed hook. Um, I can literally bring it in, unhook the fish, cast it back out there. This will stay in place as long as that mesh bag just kind of holds intact. And you're gonna get a lot of mileage out of a simple jar of bait, simply by putting it in a little mesh bag. And you don't have to worry about trying to get treble hooks out of these fish. You can lip hook a lot of them. So if you get those smaller fish, you can let them go. Typically, if you're using treble hooks and they're buried in that bait, these fish are gonna swallow it. Any of these trout that swallow that bait, you're definitely taking that fish home. Never release a fish or a trout that's bleeding. They're not gonna do well. But if you lip hook a few of these and they're on the little small side, you can simply let them go. That mesh bag on that dough bait, that fire bait works fantastic and it's well worth a try. Again, I like to use the adjustability of a sliding swivel on here so I can change out my weight if I need to. I'll go with a three, four, five foot leader and I like to put them in these spawn bags uh, to simply uh, get longevity out of my jar of bait and um, you know, single hook uh, option for catch and release if I so desire. Although in most regulations, if you are using bait, you catch a fish, you are required to keep that fish. So make sure you check your regulations. So that's just some great options with the bait. Uh, getting ready for this opening day of trout season, you do have a lot of options out there. Potsky's bait has been around since 1934 with the balls of fire, and they have just gone crazy with the amount of options you have. All of these will work pretty much on any given time. I suggest you give them a go and uh, find some success. All right, it's gonna do it for us here in the Bay Lab. We're gonna jump out for a couple minute break. We come back, we'll be in studio. Uh, with our next guest, talking some salmon season setting with Mark Baltzell, WDFW. We come back right here, Fish on Northwest.